In this section, we are going to talk about some advanced dynamic programming problems. By advanced dynamic programming, we mean dynamic programming problems that require deeper insights about the problem in order to define a proper recurrence that allows for a more efficient solution. More experience and mathematical knowledge may be necessary in order to understand these solutions. In this video, we are going to talk about counting digit sums divisible by d. We want to find out how many n-digit numbers have a digit sum divisible by d. We are also going to include numbers that start with zeros here. For n equals 3 and d equals 3, for example, we have these numbers whose digital sums are equal to 0 modulo 3. That is, they are divisible by d. We have an easy solution in order n times d, which uses dynamic programming in a similar manner to what you are used to from the previous section, so I will not be going too much into detail here. I encourage you to pause the video and make sure that you do understand this recurrence. Note that it is inefficient for large n, so we will try to find a better solution with regards to n. First we will redefine dp such that logarithms show up in particular logarithms of n. Let dp of ij be equal to how many 2 to the i digit numbers have a digit sum j modulo d. So the difference here is that instead of using i directly, we use 2 to the power of i. This means that if n is a power of 2, the answer will be in dp of log base 2 of n and 0. So we have a log that has shown up in our dp formulation. This is a good thing. Otherwise, let n be equal to 2 to the power of p1 plus 2 to the power of p2. Basically, we write n in its binary form as a sum of powers of 2. Then the answer will be equal to this, because if k1 plus k2 are equal to 0 mod d, then we can simply sum the products between dp of p1 k1 and p2 k2, with k1 and k2 going from 0 to d minus 1. This can be generalized to any number of p's here. Our recurrence is the following. For a single digit number, we simply count how many digits modulo d have a certain value. Otherwise, we apply this formulation, which is similar to the one on the previous slide for getting the answer once dp is computed. The complexity of this will be order d squared log base 2 of n, so it's worse regarding d, but it's much better regarding n, which is a very good thing if n can be very large and d is relatively small. Let's now go into our code editor and code this. I set up some things already. So first of all, the usual imports for the tests and NumPy. Then we will be computing the answer modulo this value here, because it can get very large, very difficult to read, and as it gets larger, the computation will be much slower because of this as well. Then we have a naive function that uses recursion and backtracking in order to generate all n-digit numbers and check which have a digital sum equal to 0 modulo d. Then we have the naive dp implementation, which I encourage you to look over and make sure that you understand. Again, we will not be explaining it because it is very similar to what we have covered in the previous section. And now we are going to write our efficient solution. So first of all, we will define the logarithm of n as the integer part of np.log2 of n. Then we will declare our dp array as np.zeros. So basically it's a matrix of size log2n plus 1 and d. So the memory used is much better as well. Then we will implement the base case of our recurrence. So for every possible digit, we will set dp of 0 i modulo d to be equal to that value plus 1. So we will increment dp of 0 i modulo d. Next we will implement the main body of our recurrence. 
So we will start from one and go up to log base two of n inclusively. That is why we add the plus one in the for loop. Next we will have the nested for loops that go over k1 and k2. Here we will first compute k1 plus k2 modulo d and save it in a helper variable, let's call it h. Then we will compute dp of i h plus equal dp of i minus 1 k1 times dp of i minus 1 k2. So basically 2 to the power of i minus 1 plus 2 to the power of i minus 1 gets us 2 to the power of i. So this relationship holds. And we need to take dp of i h modulo mod. And next we have to find the answer for n. So we will first check if n is a power of 2 by checking if 2 to the power of log 2n is equal to n. In that case we will simply be returning dp of log 2n 0. Otherwise we will compute the binary representation of n by using a string format specifier, which is this one in Python, to which we pass n, and we will take the reverse of this because we want to be able to easily iterate over the bits starting from the least significant bit, so from the right. So we reverse it so we can use a normal for loop that is easier to start from the left. We will initialize a results variable by setting it to none, then we will iterate the binary representation. We want the index as well as the actual value. And if the value is a 1, and result is none, so basically this is the first set bit that we have found, and also the smallest power of 2 that is part of the sum of powers of 2 that make up n. In this case we will initialize results to be equal to dp of i and all the columns. Otherwise, if b is still equal to 1 but results is not none, again we are only interested in the powers of 2 that constitute n, so we only care about the 1 bits. Then we will set new results to be equal to a zeros array of the same shape as results and iterate the k1 and k2 values. Again we will compute a helper variable h to be equal to k1 plus k2 modulo d. We will compute new results of h to be plus equal to dp of i k1 times results of k2 and take new results of h modulo mod. Outside these two nested for loops we will set results equal to the newly computed results so we continue at the next step from where we left off at this step. And at the end of this function we simply return results of 0. We will now run this code including the tests and see how the algorithm does. It might take a while to run all tests and all the instructions here because we have some large numbers here but you can already see that for n equals 10 to the power of 18 and d equals 100, the result is computed quite fast. It only takes a couple of seconds on my machine. The tests might take a little longer, maybe a minute or two, but you can see that they do pass. So I encourage you to spend as much time as you need to understand this code because it uses some paradigms and some approaches that we will be reusing throughout this section and it is very important that you properly understand them.